What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of Collecting What? It's an excuse for me to talk to people who collect. It's very simple. I just want to get to know people um, and why they collect. Uh, I want to talk to people who have the passion for collecting, just like myself. And um, it doesn't matter what they collect. It could be toys. It could be coins. It could be bottles. It could be cards. It really doesn't matter. Um, everybody that collects has a passion for what they collect. And there's always a reason. And there's always a... a an event that changes your life and collecting, you know, it's, it's part of that. So that's why I'm here. And um, hopefully I can, you know, get this going. Uh, knowing me, my procrastination, <laughs> my inability to finish stuff. But um, yeah, I had a great conversation um, in this episode, which by the way, uh, I have uh, James Brinkley. Hopefully I'm saying his uh, last name correct from uh, Fox Forge uh, Toys. And um, I completely forgot to introduce him in the video, which is why I'm doing this introduction. <laughs> it's my first episode. Few kinks still need to be worked out, but um, had a lot of fun. So uh, if you guys uh, liked the video and um, you know think it's uh, cool, enjoyable, um, think about uh, giving it a like, follow, uh, subscribe, whatever. This is YouTube. I forget. Doesn't matter. Pero and um, yeah, any. Anything you want to want to say in the comments? Uh, somebody that you think I should get on here to talk about it? Um, even if it's yourself, please. It doesn't have to be anybody. Wow, it could be literally anybody. Um, if you have anybody who is very interesting and they collect something, please. And they have no problem talking. They don't have to be on camera. Uh, we can do this, you know, audio only, no problem. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know. I would appreciate that. But yeah, I hope I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, we dive in into what he's been working on with his uh, Fox Forge toys um, side, which is pretty dope. Um, starting your own toy line. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. And um, I wish him the best of luck. So without further ado, enjoy the episode. Love you guys. I, I, I was meant to do, um, well, yeah, two o'clock or whatever like that. And the um, my girlfriend goes, oh, the the sprinkler guys coming to like uh, remove all the water out of it. Cause we were getting ready for winter or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. I was just like, Oh, I'll have to see if I can just push it out <laughs> like, like a, an hour or so. But I was just like, oh, of course. Like, and it's not like, you know, just this, it's like everything else that I've had, like zoom call wise, there's always something like, Oh, neighbor's getting his cheek tree, tree chopped down all that stuff. It's like, Listen to all that background noise and all that stuff. So I was like, oh, there's something. But all right, we, here we are, though. <laughs> this, yes, yes, indeed, man. Um, James, thank you for, uh, I guess, being the first guest to whatever this is, which I am, uh, I think I told you a little bit about it. You know, I want to uh, talk to people who collect, um, oh, no yeah. matter what they collect. It, uh, I just want to uh, shoot the shit, essentially. Um, yeah. with people who have passions for collecting certain things. So, oh, yeah, and, sure. um, you know, you, I know you collect no question. Mm -hmm. Um, you're into soccer. I see the soccer balls back there. Uh, yeah. All the world cup soccer balls dating back to 20, oh, oh six. Yeah. 2006. This so. guy, yeah. I, see, I see star Wars stuff over here. So I know you, yeah. I know you collect and um, you got your own tone line, which I'm sure we're going to be talking about it at the, in here as well. Yeah, yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, just launched on Kickstarter. So it's like, you know, two years making it from the ground up to now letting the community decide if they want to have it exist or not. So, yeah, pretty nerve wracking yet exciting at the same time. So <laughs> That's freaking awesome, though. That's freaking awesome. So uh, let me. Let, I, so I still again, it's the first time I've done this. So I have. Oh, yeah. Here. Same here. Like, honestly, first time, like on a toy. So first for both of us, this is great. <laughs> We're popping cherries up and left and right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have some questions here. I don't want to have this be like a like an interview of sorts. Mm -hmm. I just want to have a conversation. Um, but I do want to hit certain points. So uh, mm. I guess the first thing would be, how did you start collecting? And then what did you start collecting? Yeah, sure. So like, I mean, it would have to be like, I guess, you know, like my, like my dad, he grew up being a Star Wars fan. He never got into the like action figures and all that stuff. But 
it just started with, you know, showing me, you know, Star Wars and all the other sci-fi stuff. And, you know, just that's how it brought me into it. Like just from like the, I guess you call it the nerd standpoint, but, mm-hmm. um, but then, um, you know, just like growing up, your parents give you like toys and all that stuff. And, um, I still like, you know, it's just like, oh, I really like the, the Star Wars film, you know, grew up with like, you know, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, like all that stuff. So that's right. army, bu- army building all the clone troopers and all that stuff. So um, it, I don't know. It just like kind of stuck. It went from, you know, like you're young and you're playing with your action figures outside in the dirt and all that stuff to I don't want to get rid of these because I love them so much, but I don't have. I don't want to, you know, you know, play with them anymore because I've just outgrown mm-hmm. that. But looking at it from like, uh, you know, collector, it just—I don't know—that's what brought me to it. Where I was like, I still love action figures, but I just want to, you know, yeah, keep collecting action figures, but not get them out of my life completely. So it just came to the point of just, you know, buying them, collecting them, leaving them on your shelf, and all that stuff, and then you know, seeing new toy lines come out and you're like, oh my God, I love that. I can't believe they made a character of this in action figure form and then buy that. So it just kind of like all spiraled down from my father introduced me to Star Wars to, um, you know, now to like displaying action figures in my collection to, you know, having that passion and drive to want to create something of my own uh, with my, with uh, my good friend. So that's how it all, you know, came to fruition. With that, that's the, pretty uh, cool. So it was really impactful for your dad to show you Star Wars because that's what yeah. kicked it all off. That's what it all all kicked off. You know, like when you saw like all like you know you'd see like yeah, um, like Attack of Clones and all that. It's like I would love to like get like a clone or like a Mace Windu or something like that in like plastic form mm-hmm. and just, you know throw them around all that stuff and have a good time like you know and all that stuff um so like yeah and then it was just like just from there it was just like just you know so fun collecting them and all that stuff i still have my first ever um you know star wars figure i ever got which was like the um I can't remember, like oh it was it was the clone trooper with the red stripe and he came with a gunner turret limited articulation wouldn't do well in today's market but um <laughs> Still, still amazing to have um it's, is that it's the, the shock troopers the the red ones the shock troopers is that what they're called With yeah the it was like uh, it was like the phase one clone i think it was like the clone okay okay um lieutenant so, or something, something. Like do you something. remember how old you were when you got your first toy um i would say like when i got my first toy and i was like wow i want more mm-hmm. it was definitely when attack of the clones came out which i think was what oh six was it i can't remember exactly but when the attack of the clones came out that's when uh the collecting of action figures 2002 and like just scott just went off at that point that's so, awesome yeah that's awesome i had a similar experience too because i started collecting um uh heavily power of the force like okay yeah and then you know it, it was Damn, see, I can't remember. I know it was in the 90s, so the movies hadn't had yet to come out, but I was already into Star Wars somehow. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly because I don't remember seeing the movies yeah. as well. The point is, I was super deep into Power of the Force. My mom used to take me to Toys R Us, which, by the way, I got the shirt on, you know. Oh, repping. Nice. That's what's up. That's what's up. James okay. over here used to work at uh, uh, Toys R Us um, yeah. for a few years, sadly. Close yeah. Down. I miss yeah, it. That was rough being in that corporate office for a couple years. And it was just like a downward spiral at that point. It was heartbreaking. It was it's heartbreaking, yeah. man. But, um, but yeah. And, and then those movies started coming out and it was a wrap, especially with all the clones. Good no. Luck. Yeah. Mm. It was, it was funny though. Cause you mentioned power of the force. It was like, I started off with like the attack of the clone figures, but, and then, I, I went off in that direction, like Attack of the Clone figures, like all that stuff, Revenge of the Sith figures. And then now that I'm older, uh, I have went back and I've started buying, you know, Power of the Force figures and all that stuff to um, <laughs> like just display. And all. like I have like the Sand Trooper and like the Imperial Gunner from the Death Star and all that stuff. Not worth anything, but like uh, they're just just great pieces of kit. So it's just like, 
I was, I was just, I gotta have these now. It's just like, you know, if I'm trying to limit myself, like that's the, the hard part. <laughs> we have yeah. a, we have a store here called Tate's. Um, I'm sure, I don't know if you've seen Oh yeah, from videos, your videos right? that I've seen, Tate's comic books. And, and, and they have that, that damn wall with all the power oh, of the four stuff. And bro, every time I look at that wall, man, it just takes me back. Like yeah. back to Toys R Us, back in Puerto Rico, dude, just looking for, for one of the, one of the main things I looked for was the, um, Oh, the sand people. How can I? The Tuscan Raider. Yeah, Tuscan Raider. The, the yeah. one that had the the hand that wasn't um, drilled, so it was closed. Mm -hmm. You couldn't put anything oh, yeah. on there, dude. And I was able to find it, which is I think it was probably the first hunt that I ever went to, like looking for like a variant or anything like that. Yeah. And um, I know it took me a few trips to to Toys R Us, and again, I was a kid, so it's not like I was driving myself over there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it it was awesome. It was awesome, and it just it, it really brings back memories. That movie mm -hmm. the, or those toys, the episode one toys. Good mm -hmm. lord, I I was just in Texas visiting my parents, and yep. there's a box with Saboba's pot uh, racer um, yeah. uh, from Power of the Force, the Darth Vader, um, his Tie Fighter. Oh, so I mean, dude, and my little kid is like, yeah, just <laughs> playing with it, and I'm like, oh my god, yes. It's amazing. Yes, <laughs> yes collect. <laughs> it was super but cool. But no, nothing, it's just like nothing, especially when it's a figure that you're looking for and you find it in store. It's just like, it's just like, it feels so good when you physically see it in store. And it's like, I wanted this figure. I'm getting it because I've actually uh, found it. The whole online experience now with, you know, having websites crash and oh it's sold out in like two seconds it's so yeah dude exactly. it's, it's, it's a, in it's the so box rough. and uh you know there's no chance um there's and it's no... not even like a good feeling after you get it to me personally because it's just like yeah i got the figure i want but that was like not fun with like the constantly refreshing the page and all that stuff it beat it's like the whole... for real in-store experience is where it was at like mm -hmm. like especially with like uh i'll just um like with toys r us just for a little bit like mm -hmm. that was if toys r us stayed around like we had this thing called like the concept lab so it was basically how toys r us was going to look in like the next like two to three years or whatever like that oh. and when you're walking around there it was it was ready like it it was gonna be so amazing and all that stuff yeah yeah it would it would it was it would just it would have it was just so good and i was just so disappointed once like it just went under i was just like wow so much potential and it's now just being you know flushed on the away. toilet only in canada now right there yeah. yeah only in canada and then i believe overseas and like china and all that it's still going oh that's right market it's <clears throat> it's it's there i still have some co-workers that are still working at the like the office but it's like they're not the original office now it's like a real like brought down one but yeah they have they, there's like the they only have like a couple stores like one's in the garden state mall by me in new jersey and then I believe there's one in Texas somewhere, but I'm not exactly sure. Are they full stores or something smaller? I would call it like an, like, um, like, do you remember like those like Toys R Us Expresses? Uh huh. Yeah. It was like one of them. It's one of them. And they, and they just hold like limited inventory on things now. I'm pretty okay. sure. But it's like they still have, you know, good, good selection of things. But it's, um, it's, I, it's just like, the, it's more for like the, the experience you go in there's like the interactive side of things and it's oh i love that interactive like side of this product let me like go and buy that product now mm -hmm. so that's kind of like what they're like hinting at and like what they're doing at this store but like just on like if you know, all the retail stores were going like that would be like how it was for every single like toys r us store probably within the next now if not uh next year's time or whatever like that but it was it was definitely going in the right direction until it um folded into that's that yeah. that sucks man do you think it'll ever come back over here in the states um right now yeah it's, it's just a small presence i would love to see it come back like it again like it's it has so much like the toys r us brand just has like so much like 
love towards it like with like all of us like you know Mm -hmm. growing up and all that stuff like your parents taking you there and all that stuff and now it's like oh we want to take our kids there and all that stuff and and all that and it's just not it's not it's I really do hope it comes back but I I, on like a big scale but right now it's on like a really small scale but I would just love to see it come back and be the way it was we need a toy store man we need a toy yeah. store because it's it, not really it, like you have your mom and pop toy stores, which are like amazing, obviously like Tate's for example, mm-hmm. but like there is really no like designated, like, Oh, I want to go to like a, like a toy store, like, you know, Correct. Katie toys, like toys R us. Like it's like, Oh, I want to go to Walmart. And it's like, you know, you, you can get everything from Walmart for like your food, all that. Oh, let me go mm-hmm. hop in the figure section, see what they got. But it's, it doesn't, those type of stores don't have that feeling of you walk in and it's just like, wow, everything here is like a toy. And this is like, yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. And it's, it's uh, especially when you're a kid going into a oh, toy yeah. store, pff, it blows your mind, it blows your mind. It's just like, you see toys everywhere, bright colors, just, yep. just awesome stuff. And you really don't have that now. Like you said, you got Walmart, you know, a little, a few aisles, Target. Some Targets have a, a different kind of a little experience going on. I don't know what they mm-hmm. call it, but um, the way yeah, they're like their own little branch area where they have been. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like a little, little corner for like toys. So they got some, some cool shelves with like the toys there and whatnot, mm-hmm. but still it's not the same like going into a Toys R Us or a KB Toys or something. Exactly. Like that. Yeah. I, nothing that's just special, like, just made for toys yeah Mm -hmm. so that's a that's a crazy access experience now i want to ask you about uh your love for soccer because it's clearly that you love soccer not only because i see the balls back there because even if they weren't there like yeah you're posting on twitter all the time about about soccer oh yeah i mean (laughs) what what, what's going on what what got you into soccer and um yeah so like um again uh like my family is like uh british so uh, we're like just brought like my grandfather my father like all like into soccer um you know my and my mom she definitely shows like a, a big interest in it as well um so but it's like the so i've always had a passion for it still play to this day i started it when i was like you know when i was born like my dad was like we gotta get this kid a ball at his feet or whatever like that so still playing or whatever like that just for fun um but like yeah like the balls behind me they're all like the world cup balls um so like i would call them i would love to kick them about but they're now incredibly rare so i don't want to you know put, get that all dirty in the mud and now it's not really worth anything. how rare are they like are they expensive expensive um yeah i'll grab one quick uh this one's my favorite this is the 2006 world cup ball from germany and you know yeah from 2006 the, it's the official match worn one um but um i believe that one maybe goes for like around i think like the normal retail price is like they're like 150 bucks and then i believe that one now goes for like 600 oh wow um, so it's definitely gone up uh i haven't checked the prices in a long time so i could be completely wrong but when I last checked, like that's when, uh, that's like the price that it was at, but I've just been collecting them ever, ever since then. But then like, yeah, just, you know, supporting my, my, my team, uh, like mm-hmm. over in England, uh, West Ham United, uh, I, it's, it's a hard team to support. It <laughs> really is. It's really hard. You know, it's, it doesn't sometimes doesn't bring, you know, joy to my life because of how bad we are but when people ask you like oh who do you support and people like oh you know man united liverpool um chelsea all that i'm just like you know, west ham united and people go like why do you support that and i'm like i'm sorry i don't know i'm forced to support it because my it's been running since my grandfather so um but you're in new jersey right family yeah. You're in New Jersey, right? So it's like yeah. uh like being from New Jersey and being a, a Jets fan. Yep. The Jets exactly. are, it's, it's painful. I can only yeah. imagine. Yeah. It's very painful. No, not that good. Oh. <laughs> it is what it is. So, it is what it is. But that's cool, though. That's cool. It runs in your family. You know, you guys, 
you know, or at least are your parents like um, from England or are they like second generation? Um, yeah, so they were, they're from England uh, and then um, they moved to uh, Bermuda. I was born in Bermuda with my brother and then we then moved to the, the States because uh, my dad had uh, job opportunities out here. Um, and we've stayed in the States um, ever since. So that's pretty um, cool. Bermuda. Yeah. I saw, I was going to ask you about Bermuda because I saw you have a jersey from Bermuda. Yeah. Um, a, a soccer jersey from Bermuda. I'm like, yeah, did this guy really live in Bermuda? Jersey. That's pretty dope. Yeah. How is it over there? How is it living in Bermuda? It's just a tiny island. Yeah. I lived there for seven years and it was um, very, it was, you know, very nice or whatever like that. Hot summers and then like 70. 70 degree winters like it was oh that's nice it was really nice um and then you know i still know all my ways around the streets and all that stuff and i i still have family friends there that i try and get to see and all that stuff um but yeah it was it was definitely um you know going you know preschool and you know first couple years of like uh kindergarten and all that um Yeah, it was definitely like a very interesting experience. Loved every second of it. And it definitely holds a special place um, in my life. Um, and I would definitely, I definitely plan on going back countless times more. Um, <laughs> you went yeah, from Bermuda to New Jersey. Yeah. That's well, a, no, I went a... from Bermuda to Connecticut, then to New Dude, Jersey. Oh my God. Sorry. Like that's But, a change. <laughs> no, yeah. I went from like, yeah, nice island life to like, oh, Jesus, it's like, it's like freaking... 30 degrees and it's now Ugh. snowing a foot yeah <laughs> no 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 man no no oh my god my wife's from ohio and i've been there when it's like 17 degrees and mm -hmm. just no black ice it's oh yeah like i get nauseous just thinking about it <laughs> yeah you're you're in uh florida so you get the nice constant weather Yeah, pretty much you know we get hurricanes from time to time yeah, we've been lucky we've been lucky this last few years but mm -hmm. um you know we get our storms but i don't mind them you know uh if it's a bad hurricane like of course you know even in puerto rico like yeesh. but um i love thunder i love the you know cloudy skies when you know you get cloudy and then you get the sun not like places like england where it's like cloudy all right, the time cloudy. or even in ohio <laughs> my wife tells me like in winter it's like just overcast No, constantly yeah. and it's like mm -mm, not that kind of cloudy i know the cloudy that you know it's gonna rain and thunder you're like yeah mm -hmm. now that's the Plenty stuff that i storm, like yeah but um but yeah i don't mind the heat like at the heat i can just go outside put some water on my face go inside a pool go mm -hmm. to the beach i'm good i'm good i can take clothes off you know what i'm saying when it's cold <laughs> when it's cold <laughs> you gotta put layer upon layer upon yeah. layer. <laughs> no man no no <laughs> so going for Bermuda. To, to that, I can only imagine, man. I, I mean, you were young. Yeah, but, dr drastic change. Yeah. <laughs> that, that That's crazy. Um, I wanted to ask you about your love for Star Wars. It's yep. obvious in uh, in your toy line. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see the, the um, what's the word that I want to use? The inspiration, if you will. Yep. Like, like the like literally the love that you have for that. You were trying to make it your own. And yeah. it looks pretty awesome. So can you tell us about that because i'm really curious because i don't know when you had the idea when did that come up what made yeah. you get the balls to be like you know what let's do this and let's make it happen yeah so um i'll yeah so like what happened was was like I, when i was at toys r us like um you know be it was it was like a dream job like right out of college just like it was amazing you know seeing all the early releases, especially for like the Star Wars figures and all that stuff, like months before I like the public actually got to see, I was like blown away by that. <laughs> But um, it was being at Toys R Us for the, like the, it was like two and a half years. It made me go like, oh, I know, I now know how to make my own action figure. because I was working with like overseas factories and, all that stuff and it was like i had my ideas in my head all that stuff um and then i was just like you know what i know how to do this i want to execute it um so i i want to so i ended up reaching out to one of my good friends from college and he's all he's a big huge action figure guy as well just like me um and 
he was and I was just like you want to you know go on this trip or whatever like that of making our own action figure line so we kind of put like all our ideas and thoughts together and we were like oh like what what do we want like in a character and all that stuff and you know Star Wars was a big one obviously but we also took stuff from like Jurassic Park um like uh, like big games like uh Anthem like that's a that was a recent release from EA mm -hmm. I believe um we took it from like really old like toy lines there's this one called uh the Outer Spacemen um and that one's like a 1960s um vintage toy line and the figures are made out of like wire inside mm -hmm. and then like filled with rubber over the top um but those, those line that that line, you know, definitely had good. In, we got inspiration from that. Um, and then, you know, just like, you know, market research of like what we were looking for is, oh, let's make like a super soldier type guy. So, you know, like Warhammer, another big one that played a part. Gears of War, another big mm -hmm. uh, like line that played a part. So it was like, so when we were like sitting down, it was like, we can make whatever we want. And we have these amazing you know, brands that we can, you know, take inspiration from and, you know, mesh together to make, you know, one character. Um, so that's where it, um, you know, came from and all that stuff. And now we have um, like six characters that are now, you know, launched on the Kickstarter that we're going to try and see if we can get produced. That's, that's right. The six inch, right? So that's what you got yeah, on the, the Kickstarter, right? Scale. So you released, what was it? The, the three, three quarter inch? Is that uh, the first release? Yeah, so like the so at first it was you know just to kind of test the waters. We released the it was called the Founders Edition figures, and that was five points of articulation. You know, swivel head, swivel arms, and swivel legs. It was very minimal, um, but it was like all hand painted, boxed. We three D printed them, <laughs> the whole everything, and it was just you know hours of work. And then we were just like people were like, oh, I really love the designs um but like oh i can't i don't i'm not interested because it doesn't have the articulation that i'm looking for and all that stuff and it was like we knew we were going to go the route of adding more articulation but it was the fact of like how expensive it is it mm -hmm. it's 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 like tens of thousands of dollars to make it and it's just for the mold charges it, it's just crazy and i learned that from like Toys R Us, it was just like, oh yeah, we need to be in this price range and we can only have like three colors on this action figure. So when you like hear like toy reviewers saying like, oh, the paint app isn't so good. It's mm -hmm. like <laughs> the company had to keep it in its margins. So, I mean, it may, that's what it makes like the whole thing great. It's like you can then take their action figure and then make it better. True. Like, so like, for example, like if, like the Kickstarter gets funded, I would promote them. I would promote collectors to paint the figures and make them better. Like um, customize them, like customize them, whatever them they want whatever way they want, all that stuff. Like I think, and like that would just be so cool to see. Um, like we're just doing it like with our paint choices and all that. But obviously, if a guy comes along, he's like, I want to make him red. I'm just like, okay, make him red. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> like I would love to see that. Are you painting them yourself uh, in the States or are they getting painted? Uh, so the, the Founders Edition, we did everything in the States. That was 3D printed, all that stuff. And like when we physically handed the final product to the customer, that was all hand done by us in-house. The, um, the <clears throat> figures now that we're now like presenting on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. that is all like the prototypes you see that's all from the china uh the china factory gotcha. um so th if we are to get back we would be going with a china factory that would you know mass produce them like any other uh like wholesaler would do um yeah. so you're taking trips to china now checking the factory and all that stuff uh not obviously right now like because of the whole you know covid oh thing, that's right but, i keep forgetting we're yeah, 2020 but, still <laughs> <laughs> but like it'll it'll happen at some point i'm i'm guessing but like everything is so like well done now with like just like the video conference calls that you can have so it makes things very mm -hmm. easy to get the point across and all that stuff so i would love to go over there at some point just to see like everything and 
like see like a factory and like you know producing stuff in person um like i had the opportunity to do that at toys but obviously it started to go bankrupt so they didn't have the funds <laughs> necessary to even do it to but, send you guys over there dude but i can only imagine you walking in a factory with your like your toys like it's making your creation mm-hmm. like, that, that has to be an experience like that you need yeah to like the, the pr- like yeah well, obviously we're not producing these yet if the if the kick if it gets yeah if it gets back then it'll be really crazy to see that but just the it's just the fact of you know just seeing like the prototypes and like the amount of it's like they, they just knock it out of the park this factory that we're working with and it's it it's just like gives you the like when i first opened the box when they when they came it was just like immediate chills like it's yeah. like wow i've made a figure with my friend that um that has all the articulation and you can bend them whatever which way you want and get those really cool like action poses and all that stuff so for like the toy photographers to get and all that mm-hmm. stuff so yeah really happy with do you have any on hand that you can show yeah i I can show you um i guess i'll start with like the initial uh initial uh four characters which is um xeno commander alder the legionnaire and then commander alder in uh legionnaire colors um and like that the whole thing behind with commander alder being in the legionnaire colors that say a, a reason in the story i don't so like if you want to learn more you can read about mm-hmm. it in the, on the on our website but i'll start off with uh xeno here so they have 30 points of articulation um so he had it's like you know similar to like a marvel legends figure star wars black series um my screen's really small so i'll just try and do my it's best. okay we, we can I, can I can see it um that's pretty cool. yeah this is this is Zeno. yeah he has like full range of motion in the head um his arms move and all that stuff the the prototypes they're really flimsy so i wouldn't be surprised when i'm showing you this they might fall apart gotcha of course the quality is not <laughs> going to be that in the final product but um the prototypes yes that's the final product but um yeah just like he moved like really well and all that stuff he has like uh jetpack thrusters on the back um so he's and he's gonna come with um like dual wielding pistols and all that stuff um so with him uh the inspiration came from uh anthem halo uh gears of war and um uh, warhammer so it is like all little bits of that just get patched <laughs> into this one figure yeah so like with with Zeno, he's just a little short story on him. He's just like a mysterious being um, found on the like these outer reach planet that um, Commander Alder finds, and he's Zeno is able to communicate telepathically. Um, so he's um, telepathically and all that mm-hmm. stuff, and he's I would say the more one of the more powerful members of the team given how agile and quick he is. Um, so he's, he's faceless. He's not gonna, he's just like, just, it's like a, it's like hard to explain with like, I don't want to give too much away in the story, but like, Mm -hmm. he's like, um, like a fallen warrior. That's like kind of come back to life in a way and he's like in this suit that the other characters have made for him. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, you're talking in, uh, a lot about the story. Do you have any um, uh, hopes or anything on in the works? Like, uh, yeah, so like ancient... with, the, with the story, um, we ha- we've been doing it to where um, uh, we've been doing it to where we've been writing like on our um, – website like a blog post or whatever like that like i don't know if you've uh seen like acid rain like that action figure series they do like blog posts and that's how they do their stories no no um, i haven't figures and um and they they just you know update their website constantly with these like new stories and missions and all that stuff and we thought 
this is a really good way to, you know, flesh out the lore of the figures and, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, get people more intrigued. Um, so we've been, um, my partner and I, Joe, we've been working together and like, it's been so fun getting together and just like brainstorming and coming <laughs> up with these ideas for these characters and how do they meet one another and all that. It, it, it's just, it's so fun. Um, and like, uh, I'll probably say it at the end, but I'll just, I'll say it now as well. It's just mm. like, make it, it's just like, make some, do something that makes you like, you know, you happy. Like you're making your podcast. I, I it's like, you're doing a great job. I'm really enjoying this podcast. So I really hope this takes <laughs> off of you and all that stuff. I appreciate but it. Like, like the passion, like with making a toy line and all that stuff, it's, it's been amazing and like meeting amazing people and like other toy collectors at like toy shows and like just online virtually now because of the way things are but it's just been really amazing to um meet like all these amazing people and share like our ideas with uh with them and all that stuff and getting valuable feedback whether that's you know oh yeah he needs to be a different color oh okay that's great or like oh he we, I really like the way he looks. It's like, oh, thanks so much. That means so much. But I would, I would hands down say, like, if you're in the toy community, like, even if it's something really small, like, just make, I feel like making something is just, mm -hmm. a, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Like, even if the Kickstarter doesn't get back, it's just been an amazing ride, just, you know, creating these characters. It's been worth it for you, huh? Yeah, with like amazing people and all that stuff. Like, that to me has been, the most enjoyable part of this process um but yeah uh, you, though. so I that's appreciate, i appreciate you sharing that that emotion that that yeah you, uh, go get it attitude yeah you know, go, what go you love it. like i would love to see other toy lines come out from the ground up like fresh content all that stuff like i would love to see that from other uh toy people it's pretty cool um, kickstarter's making it happen i mean you see so many different small um companies like yourself yeah. like uh we've spoken to like some um like uh plunderlings they had a really successful uh kickstarter they're like these like cool little like three and a half inch i believe uh like um like they remind me of like gremlins like action figures like but they're like <laughs> pirate themed they're really cool original like original content amazing i'm so happy they got back and it, like they're now coming out into the toy line now uh into the toy community so everyone should definitely check out plunderlings you can get them on like uh plunderlings. A toy store and all that stuff um but yeah i guess i'll con continue on with the next character so yeah that's uh zeno he's like the air assault specialist with his jetpack pretty cool um, the, the um the that prototype looks pretty delicious by the way Oh yeah, he's um the paint yeah, look the awesome. paint application and all that. They they knocked that out of the park. Who who we're working with and all that. So I'm really happy with how that's coming along. Um, so that he you can get him on the Kickstarter with the initial four characters. Uh, this is the second character that you can you can get. This is uh, Commander Alder. Um, he is um a, like a human a uh, human soldier um, who eventually, because we already have him in his bad colors as well now, yeah. as you know, good guy colors, and he defects um, from his previous employer uh, and he goes on to make this, this squad with Zeno, Zerge, Razek, Dost. Um, and so like he's, now, he's the, in charge of like this like squad of guys so like yeah, he has like you know again full range of motion, all that. Apologize if he falls apart in my hand. <laughs> no worries. Uh, but yeah, he has like a yeah, full range of motion, all that. He is also available on the Kickstarter, so he's gonna be yeah, he's available um, and all that. So that's him. And then he has removable helmet, uh, so that just slot slots on. Um, and then he comes with uh, I guess I'll show you the weapons that he comes with as well. Oh, um, sure. He comes with um, a scanner tablet, um, 
so he can like you know analyze the environment around him this tablet also brings up um like life uh vitals and all that stuff to see how his squad's doing and all that okay stuff. um yeah tracking and it, it's a it's it's it puts an ipad to shame basically <laughs> Um, and then here's like, um, his, uh, shotgun, uh, that he, he comes with. So we've added, we wanted on the weapons to add like a lot of, I feel what we were doing market research. I feel like a lot of, um, like toy lines didn't add like colors to like their accessories and it would be yeah, like, they're casting one, one color and that's one it. Color. So we just took the plunge and said, we want to have some of it on, on there. So we've done, you know, uh, the a nice clean s slate gray with some green energy and some <laughs> red buttons. Um, That's appreciated. Trust me. Again, especially Marvel Legends, notorious. I mean, I understand why they're doing it, but it's like mm -hmm. boom, cast it. It's cut, came out, done. Like, there's not yeah. even paint it. Let's not do anything to it. Yeah, like we're we're definitely trying to keep like the collectors in mind for what they're looking for to like the best of our ability. Like we're trying to make it an affordable price point for everyone uh, as well as giving people what they are looking for in a, in a line. And a lot of people said having uh, like color on the accessories was a big one so that we went ahead and made sure to do that. So that was um, yeah. Commander, Commander Alder. Um, Commander Alder. Commander and then Alder. Here is the next one. This guy is the the baddie. Um, he is the the legionnaire. So um, he is a troop builder character. So you can you know army build him if you like. Mm -hmm. um, there's his um, helmet. Um, so he works for the for the main bad guy, or is he the, the main, main bad? Guy? Yeah, he works for. Um, the it's the legionnaires and then the, this group of legionnaires they're called the reaper division and they work for volta enterprises who are like the the big bad guys okay. um it's like a trading corporation gone gone rogue like they're just harvesting materials from alien planets and not giving a damn basically um <laughs> like enslaving or alien colonies and all that stuff to make sure they get what they want just so they can make profit. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like how the story kind of leads into it. So we wanted to, um, so he's a troop builder. Um, and then he also has removable helmet. So his helmet comes off uh, and he has like a ski mask underneath. And then the cool thing with these, um, these legionnaires is, is they, where they're a part of the Reaper division, they put um, like um, paint, uh, face paint over their eyes and um, yeah, over their eyes to like signify that they're a part of like the, the Reaper. So we kind of gave gotcha. them like a bone colored um, like face paint that he wears to signify that he's a part of like the Reapers and it gives it more of a menacing feel like when we were looking at um like you know old um like tri like tribes and um like the anglo saxons and all that stuff wearing their war paint and all mm -hmm. that stuff we wanted to incorporate that so yeah he has you know full range of motion he we actually got this um this prototype in yesterday so i don't want to bend him too much because yeah. i don't want to break but yeah he has like you know any anything you know similar to the uh, Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series articulation, um, and then the next character is um, this is a Kickstarter exclusive. So whatever gets backed on the Kickstarter is only what's going to be made. We're not going to gotcha. be reselling him on the website. I mean, if it depends on, oh, we're only allowed to order by, you know, certain amount of units or whatever, and we have, say, for easy math, say, like 10 pieces that get ordered or something like that, but the factory says you need to order 20, we're going to have 10 left over. So we, if you're lucky and you see us at a show, you might be able to get your, gotcha. your, your, your um, a Kickstarter exclusive action figure if, if, if it's left. If you're lucky. Because we're, we're going to try our best to just limit it to whoever 
backs the Kickstarter. Of course, so this of course. Is, um, just to make it like a, that more special. So this is the Kickstarter exclusive figure. This is Commander Alder. So it's basically the same mm-hmm. Commander Alder, but just repurposed in his crimson uh, Reaper Division colors. Um, and he comes with the, um, say, like the head. He has a scar across his eye and all that stuff. I don't know if you can see that. But, um, but yeah, he's, we're trying to get as much range of motion. I'll take the helmet off so you can see it better. But, uh, like, he's going to ha- try and have, like, a lot of posability in the head. Oh, yeah, that's good. And all that stuff. So that way, when we got the first prototype, yeah. Um, I'll actually show you now, like, just to show that we're constantly trying to improve upon these. Like, this one, he has legit no movement in the neck. I can't even <laughs> move it. So I was just like, the collectors aren't going to be happy. Like, I know I wouldn't be. So, like, I'm, like, trying to think of, like, what they're looking for. My partner has been, like, saying, oh, we should add this. So I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. So we're trying to – so, yeah, he has, like, way more emotion now. So we're constantly trying to improve upon these. And then he also has, and this is going to go for every figure. Mm -hmm. He's also going to have movable (laughs) shoulder pads. So they move. So it allows for more like range of motion in the arms. Mm -hmm. I wish I had like an actual final piece, but I can't because it, it's, it's it's brittle. Um, I believe they made this in like some wax. Um, But it's like, I can't do as much motion in it, but on the final product, it's going to be way better because you can even take the shoulder pads off and, nice. you know, customize them with the other shoulder pads and stuff. Um, so we're constantly just trying to improve upon the figures themselves as time goes on, but while we're still, you know, waiting for hopefully the funding goal and all that stuff. Um, and then another cool thing is, is let me see if I can, um so that's, question. Uh, yeah sorry that's the core four and oh, then shit. you can hey. get right now on kickstarter beautiful I, which by the way the link will be under the description so go check it out um link to okay. the instagram link to well uh, i think you got um uh instagram do you have twitter for uh uh yeah we have twitter so okay. I, I can yeah, i can give you all hey, everything everything's gonna be linked down so you can check it out for sure um, I was going to ask you, who's designing the actual toys for them to be made, like, in China? Like, are you doing that personally? Is your friend? So, how it starts is, um, how it starts, I thought I had the drawings near me, but I don't. How it start was, is, like, um, I'll just show him now, <laughs> because he's right here. But mm-hmm. he, this, is, this is a stretch goal character. But this is um, Dost, and in his all mighty articulated form now but he was the first character you know designed um and he we basically it started with a drawing um basically what i was looking for and it was i want to do um you know jurassic park uh, that bit of jurassic parks in there the outer space men are in there um yeah, halo warhammer star wars everything i love is in this character um and uh so then we made the drawings and then we then found our 3d sculptor here in the united in here in the united states that was able to um turn it the drawings so we had a front back and sides and he turned it into a three-dimensional object with his um z brush i believe Mm -hmm. he uses uh and just made it into this you know, three-dimensional thing. And then we sent it off to the factory and then the engineering team then does their job and adds all the articulation <laughs> that we're looking for and all that stuff to then make the, the prototypes come to life that way. Okay. Um, so you just send the, the, the 3D model. It's just a 3D model. There's no articulation. It's not broken and down. Then you, send, then you send like a, a reference image. Like we found a, uh, we actually sent, um this i actually have it um it's like a blank figure that you can get and it Mm -hmm. it just show i want all this articulation in this figure like and then the 
engineer would then add that um, to the the figure. That's, um, that's, that's super dope. Um, so yeah, that's uh, how we it came to them being created and all that stuff. Um, it's definitely a very fun and interesting process. Um, you know, where it's it's uh, it's not just you know my partner Joe and I, you know, making making these, you know, it all started in our heads, but we've worked with so many amazing people and artists and all that stuff to bring it to the, to the next level. Um, so it, it's now, um, so yeah, now it's just like, you know, two years and here we are and on the, on the Kickstarter now we're just letting people decide if they want it or not. <laughs> so if they want it or not. Where are you uh, spreading the word? I mean, obviously Instagram is one of those places. Are you? Yeah. So we're, we're spreading the word on Instagram. We've, um, you know, reached out to um, our artists. They've, they've been, you know, posting on their pages and to their following. Uh, we've been to a couple toy shows. Um, and people and people have seen them physic the the prototypes physically at the show. Um, Did you have them at Toy Fair? Sorry, that interrupt you. Those uh, right. those prototypes. We we didn't have them at the Toy Fair. We we were showing them the um, the founders edition figures. We met like Pixel Dan there and all that stuff. So you got to see a fa founders edition, and we're like, here's a super limited articulated figure, <laughs> but he's gonna have everything uh yeah, in terms true. of the articulation um but yeah we've been you know uh yeah toy shows we just finished uh, my partner went to the one in uh Persephone that in new jersey that was a it was i think it's like new jersey toy con so it's mm. a pretty big one for all of new jersey um and then we did five points festival back in um Back in May, that was just before like COVID hit and started really shutting things down. Yeah. Um, so it was, we would definitely, it was definitely with the whole COVID thing, a very big <laughs> struggle with like, um, you know, trying to promote it. Cause I feel like if you're trying to promote it in person, like people will obviously see it. And like when we were at the toy show a couple weeks ago, um, but the toy show is like, you know, all socially distanced and yeah, all, yeah. Like all those guidelines. Um, and you know, people, we had so many people coming up to the, to the booth and, um, like great feedback and, you know, wholesalers reaching out to us and physically in person and all that stuff. So it was like really good to see. But then when you're like online, it's like, Oh yeah, let me you know like pay for an ad, but then it's like you know when you're on Instagram, you're like swipe, 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 swipe. swipe. <laughs> yep, yep. So it's like it's really hard, and like you know the it's it's been really hard, but I think I'm hoping we can we can get to the end goal, but we'll we'll <laughs> we'll just have to see. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that that's how we've been going about it. Um, you know, talking to you, like that's. Mm -hmm. I hope this helps, honestly. I mean, you know, I hope. No, yeah. I never I, heard about it. Check it out. And they're like, oh, dude, this is, I think I want this in my collection. Go check out the Kickstarter. And, you know, if they like it, bam. Yeah. It, it looks like you're doing pretty good. I mean, I was checking your Kickstarter. You got 32 backers. And what is it? You started, what, yesterday? Uh, Yeah, we launched it. We were a little late. Um, We were meant to launch it at like 6.30. I think we ended up launching it at like 6.45. So it hasn't been up for... As of right now, this podcast that we're doing hasn't been up for 24 hours yet. There you go. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, man. I'm hoping they look, they look dope. Especially, dude, that purple guy. I sh I should, oh I yeah, his... I'll, I'll, I'll show you him in a minute. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, he's like, uh, like yeah, one of the stretch goals. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's <laughs> super <laughs> dope. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I can cl completely understand. It's so much better being out there showing yeah. people physical things than you know stuck at your house hey, yeah just like know. typing away check out my product like yeah it's not the same man it really hurts I, it's funny enough that you brought it up because i was going to ask you like right there and then i'm like it has covid been an impact and it clearly has man and that, yeah, that, that sucks been a big 
like decided like it's definitely been like a big hurdle to jump over so uh like we'll have to just wait and see honestly like we just it's we mm-hmm. if we if covid didn't hit we would have been at probably we've done everywhere shows. <laughs> we probably would have been at maybe like six shows like so you you just don't know like like what direction it could have went in you know like with if covid wasn't a thing that da- da- damn covid dude yeah them go yo can you show me that what's his name oh yeah Zerge. so search so we have um yeah the stretch goals now so if we just get initially back then we only hit the 55 or whatever like that mm-hmm. and um these other characters will not get unlocked we've had i've had the conversation with my partner where we would obviously we would see how I guess after the Kickstarter, if we were to be successful and if there was pre-sales after the Kickstarter, like on our website, Mm -hmm. um, we would then be able to maybe unlock that character that way, the next character that way, and we would just communicate with everyone via email. Um, But we're also on um, Big Bad Toy Store. Um, They've, uh, the Big Bad Toy Store team have been amazing. They've you know um really liked the line and they That's awesome threw us up threw of us uh threw us up on the front page uh for the for uh, i think like a day and a half or something like that and it got um you know some yeah good some good press and then some not so good press so we could definitely <laughs> see what people liked and didn't like which to me was an amazing thing to see because that only makes us make better action figures in the future so gotcha. um so yeah um that was that but yeah i'll go through the stretch goals now so i believe um the next stretch goal after the initial backing is the weapons crate i don't have the prototype of that because that's just a render um but it's basically a a weapons crate and it can hold all of your accessories uh pistols and shotguns and tablets i believe you can hold up to i think like eight shotguns in this um weapons crate so it'd make you know cool like you know diorama piece yeah yeah um if a kid were to buy it it would make a really cool weapons locker obviously uh then after that um then after that uh stretch goal i believe it's the dread ops legionnaire and that figure is a, he's like special forces um a special forces legionnaire brought on to like super hardcore missions and um you know best of the best and so it's be, it's the legionnaire but with uh changing the crimson to all black yeah, with a red sick. light it looks sick. Um, so he's the next stretch goal and then the stretch goal after that is um dost um so this is yeah dos who i briefly showed before um yeah full you know full range of motion i we got inspiration from you know jurassic park do you remember mm. in jurassic park when that guy in the yellow uh raincoat is running in the jungle and it's yep. like <laughs> and the, the wings <laughs> pop out of the side yeah, i was like yeah, of course. That on a character with ears so like that's <laughs> where the inspiration in the flippers came from oh, and then like, on the black lagoon as well um and then just to dive in on the backstory a little bit like this little gray part in mm-hmm. his mouth is like a voice communicator so he can speak easily to um to older so like that's explained in the blog stories that we're doing as well um but they all share you know different you know subtle changes mm-hmm. um in the armor and all that stuff like some green dots here um he dost specializes in like um his people are like shamans and like tribesmen so they specialize in like medicines and all that stuff so he knows how to treat someone if they were to be injured and all that stuff so i guess you would call the medic the medic of the team um and then yeah he has like weapons pouches on his legs on his bandolier and all that stuff uh and then he has like you know like uh, uh three fingers um um and he they can all 
um, you know, grip all the different weapons and all that stuff. So he's going to be coming with uh, the the tablet. Mm-hmm. And I believe the pistol, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're right. I'm looking at the pictures. Oh, nice. you're you know your product, sir. You know your yeah. product. <laughs> um, and then after that, I believe, is it the insurgent? Um, yeah. the insurgent. That, that, that blue looking. Yeah. So that's, uh, that is the Legionnaire again. We're trying to, you know, we want people to like troop build because we're thinking, you know, like stormtroopers, clone yeah, yeah. troopers, all that stuff. So we're like, oh, how cool would that be if we did our own, you know, troop builder? So it's the Legionnaire again, just rehashed in, um, in redecoed. like redecoed in like Commander Alder's colors. So Insurgent is like um, Defector, Betrayer. So he, these guys don't like, and they've come to realize they don't like what Volta Enterprises, who they work for, is doing. And it's gone a little too far out of hand, so they defect and they realize that Commander Alder has been, you know, right all along um, with what he believes in and all that stuff. Um, kind of takes on the role of like bounty hunting in a way, like kind of like a Robin Hood, I would say. Um, you, you said know, bounty hunting, someone like, yeah, like uh, Boba Fett, maybe? Yeah, imagine that. I think. <laughs> Who would win that? I, I I don't know. I think Alder would probably. Win. We we need we need one of your guys with a with a little what do you call it, rocket pack. Yeah, I guess that's when Zeno would come in, right, with the rocket pack on that. There you go. That's um, what I'm talking about. But yeah, they kind of take their role into like bounty hunting and all that stuff. But their 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 end goal is to like try and mess up Fulta Enterprises. Um, at the end of the day. Um, so that's, yeah, the insurgent is a good guy, legionnaire, who's realized I want to, you know, bounty hunt and, you know, mm-hmm. be a part of Commander Alder's squad. Um, so that, so that's that, I believe, yeah, he, all the, um, all the legionnaires come with like the pistol and the shotgun. Gotcha. Um, so we're trying to add as much uh, accessories as possible for everyone. And not just giving them like the one weapon. Um, so we're definitely trying our best, like, to give like collectors as much as possible with these uh, figures. Um, so then after the insurgent, I believe it's Razek. Yeah, yeah, he has a muzzle on his face. What's up with that? So, uh, oh, so there you go. That or a panty. Uh, so this is on Razek. This is his breathing apparatus on his face so he with him um my partner uh joe um mm. he was a big inspiration like on this figure for for him um so he's his bag just fell off <laughs> but, um <laughs> but he's like with the idea with razek is we got um like insectoid so he kind of has like that stick insect look to him as well as um like reptilian like iguana mm-hmm. um, so he's tall he's one of the taller figures i believe he's like six and a quarter and commander all their legionnaire they're like six inches so it all goes in the six inch scale but this what he we wanted to show different sizes of characters yeah, yeah. and all that stuff like um like Zurge is the biggest character who I'll be showing next. Um, but yeah, he come like they have like great range of motion and all that. I mean, they could do more, but it's it's again uh, yeah yeah low type thirty percent articulation, baby. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's he up. He has like reptilian claws. Um, <clears throat> he is like the I would um like the mad scientist of the like loves to blow stuff up and takes things very um like yeah likes to blow stuff (laughs) short-tempered that's his method of working with anything it's like that's my my solution just blow shit up but oh yeah we should just go this older would be like oh yeah let's just go this way take this right he's like no i think you should just blow it up (laughs) um so yeah that's uh i'll give another uh thing but yeah that's that's razak um it's like a reptile like you said with like bees eyes or something yeah, so, um, yeah, he has horns and then uh, his breathing apparatus masks to where he can breathe in any environment. 
and then we went off the inspiration of like um like fly eyes and stuff like that there you so, go not beast p2 um, flies flies yes insect um <laughs> <Rush Beneath Terrors. laughs> little beast wars action my kid's been watching beast wars so uh oh nice <laughs> You know how it is. It was Benator. I see he has those eyes are that's what he reminded me. That's why I said B. My nice, apologies. yeah. It's it's a fly. But oh yeah, I, I love Beast Wars. And anyway, I'm I'm ready. Yeah, the no, Be- Beast Wars is um yeah, de- definitely a great um bro line, yeah. That 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 T V show, damn, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Mainframe data meant phenomenal, phenomenal job. And apparently they're supposed to be coming back for what is it season three or series three of the Nef- the stuff Netflix is doing? I don't mm-hmm. know if you've seen the the War for Cybertron. Man, I don't know why I'm blanking out right now, but they have a six episode. Um, okay. Um, so it's gonna be three parts. So the first part was in Cybertron. Second mm-hmm. part's gonna be on Earth, and the third part they were teasing, uh, essentially Beast Wars. So I'm not mm-hmm. sure exactly what's gonna happen, but um, it was cool. It was cool. First part was cool. The animation is dope. You know, I like what they're doing with the story. They're switching it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, you know, I'm a base for Transformers, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> From your, all your videos I've watched, yo, yeah, Transformers, man. I mean, that that's what's up. But, um, but yeah, Beast Wars was phenomenal. So, <laughs> anyway, I, my, my apologies for the interruption. Continue with uh, sir. Oh, no, you're good, man. Like whatever, whatever you <laughs> want to talk about. Like, it, you must be so happy that um, uh, Maximus is into all this stuff, carrying on the mm. on the action figure collecting. I, I don't know if you had a chance to check out my Instagram stories the last few days, but he has been on a Transformers binge. Like, okay, yeah. I, I've been trying to get him to watch the Transformers movie, the animated one from the 80s, yep. uh, for the longest time. He, it just never stuck. He didn't care, whatever. I think it was yesterday or two days ago, he, I have a poster by his room because I have um, six poster, movie posters. One of the posters is from that movie. You know, you got Ultra Magnus holding the, the I think it's the Matrix of Leadership. Yeah. Whatever. He's like, Daddy. Woke up from the nap. The first thing he says, Daddy, I want to watch this movie. I'm like, <laughs> you, you serious, bro? Are you serious? That's amazing. So, dude, we put it on, and he has little toys that Hasbro made back in 2007 mm-hmm. for when the first movie came out. It, it, they look like um, they're, they're very childish. They're very uh, uh, they're like little vinyl. Point yeah. is, they they had um um all the lines in there. You know, the G1, G2, uh, Beast Wars, the movie stuff. So he, you know, I have had them forever. I gave it to him. He's been playing for them. So he recognizes every single character from G1 in the movie. So he's like, oh my God, that's Ultra Magnus. Oh my yeah. God, that's Rod, uh, Hot Rod. That's you amazing. know, it, it, and I'm like, oh my God. Yes. yes. So I was having a little moment. I was having a little moment. It was, it was exciting. It was exciting. Mm-hmm. So, and he loves, he's loving Beast Wars too. So another show yeah. that I tried to get him, um, I think last year, I think I clearly he was too young. He didn't give a crap. Mm-hmm. um but he loves dinosaurs he loves jurassic park mm-hmm. and um once he saw uh megatron turn into a dinosaur he's like whoa whoa yeah <laughs> that's my show yeah so it's been fantastic he's into terminator as well oh. right? <laughs> that's a that's a understatement he he oh, okay. is the terminator he is I mean, the terminator okay dude you know a very the kid friendly movie the terminator uh terminator 2 judgment day but, um, dude, he's watched it so many times. He loves that movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, his third birthday was all Terminator um, related. Um, it's just like he has his jacket. He wants to put his boots on all the time, you know, to look like the Terminator. It's sick, dude. I love it. That mean, that, that, that's, that's awesome. Like, I don't have kids, but, like, hopefully, like, they they'll uh come i can like hand down my action to them <laughs> you can train them well especially in the ways of star wars which my kid again loves star wars as well you know he's mm-hmm. lightsabers oh, he loves man. darth vader he does the oh, <laughs> like the really yeah. noise and everything i mean it's 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 amazing it's funny enough we haven't really sat down like he hasn't asked for the movies mm-hmm. as, as much as i would you know thought so 
but mm-hmm. I have a feeling, you know, just like he just did with uh, Transformers, eventually. Yeah. One day it'll happen, yeah. Because you know what he asked for? Um, Rogue One, when Darth Vader okay. comes in, that's what he wants to watch. Okay. Oh, put, put the part, because he, he has me play the, the, the Resistance or whatever, mm-hmm. and then Darth, and he just chopped nice. me and everything. Love it's it. Phenomenal. It's phenomenal. My kid. <laughs> Uh, dude, it's having your little own action figure. I swear to God. No, <laughs> yeah, especially like it must be so amazing, like where he's now loving everything that you're lo- that you love. So, yeah, that, which is crazy because you know you, you, I don't know, like I never really liked everything my father liked, so you can't mm-hmm. expect a kid to like everything you like. But mm-hmm. I mean, dude, it's toys. Like, oh yeah, come on, bro, come on. <laughs> He's just like, oh, can I have this? Can I have this? Like, he's in love with Samus now. Samus. I okay. Know. I don't know. Love Samus. She's right there. So okay, I, have, yeah, I see her. So I have Samus there, and he saw her in Smash Brothers. Okay. And has been in love with Samus. He wants my wife to essentially dress up as Samus for Halloween. You know, obviously, oh, we can't because we would have to make it. I wish I was a cosplayer so I knew how to make this stuff. Yeah, that'd be like a bunch of 3D printing, probably. probably. Exactly. So, okay. but he is in love with Samus, and unbeknownst to him, I have the first four figure uh, Samus uh, quarter scale statue coming okay. soon. So, oh, which love that. It, it, oh, it's freaking awesome. Has lights and everything. Oh. I I, <laughs> I pre ordered that thing back in 2016. 2016. Oh. They they had a bunch of issues with the. Uh, um, oh, sorry, how big is it? Is it light? Quarter light? scale. Quarter Ooh. scale. And it, and it lights up. And that was the problem. They were having problems with the way the material, the polystone, I guess, they were using mm-hmm. wasn't the best for putting in the lights. So mm-hmm. they had to switch the materials. And when they did that, they also re- refined the sculpt. So, I mean, again, it's it's I'm almost into 2021 and I still haven't received mine. And there's people who haven't even received like, hey, it's in the it's going to come in the boat now, like blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it, it's been a journey. But oh, wow. I'm cool. I'm, I'll wait. It's, you have uh, any idea when you could potentially be getting that? Not. It's supposed to be November. OK. So my only fear now is that it's going to come with some defect. So then I'm going to have to break it and wait for a replacement. So that's going to take another, I don't know, three years. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but either way, I'm excited to get that because I know he's going to go like, oh, my God. He wants to be Master Chief for, okay. for Halloween. And I'm Character. like, I thought we could find a, a costume mm-hmm. uh, in uh, Costco. They, were, they didn't have his size. I found a $350 costume online, which is sick. But I'm like, bro, I'm poor. Unemployed right now. I ain't got no money for that. I'm so sorry. I failed you. But he is in love with Master Chief as well. Like, he wants to be Master Chief. So we got him the Mandalorian costume. Okay. Um, which he, again, oh, that's one thing he likes to watch. It's Mandalorian. He doesn't watch, like, the original Star Wars yeah, movie. Yeah, season's coming out soon. Oh, I'm so excited, dude. I am so, I'm sure, I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm talking to Star Wars fan number one yeah. over here. Yeah. I'm sure you're excited. I, I love the Mandalorian. The first season again. Oh, of course. Uh, delightfully. I, I'm, I'm so good. I have no problem watching that season again. Mm-hmm. So I can't, and I can't wait for the second season. It looks good. Now that they're mixing it with, um, um, what's the animated show? Blinking out. Um, oh my God. Was it the, the Clone Wars? Oh, the Clone Wars. Yep. Oh, uh, you can still hear me, right? Yeah, I can still hear okay, you. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to my camera here, but um, dude, it's 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 one of those things where I'm I'm excited because the possibilities are endless essentially. Yeah. So just bring it, just bring it. Yeah, for sure. God damn. So um, oh man, oh yes, you were gonna show us uh, uh the big guy. Oh yeah. Let me see if I could get my camera working while you uh. Mm-hmm. Show us that monster. So he is, um, yeah, after Razek, I believe it's the, um, it's Zurge. And this is, yeah, this is him. He's going to have, um, we fixed a couple things on Zurge that aren't shown on this prototype. So he's going to have way more um, motion and, uh, and all that in like the shoulders and stuff. But here's Zurge, he stands at, um, 
seven inches tall. So he's going to be a uh, deluxe figure. Ooh, looks massive, dude. Yeah. Um, so Ooh, he's, that works. he's big. And then this is his weapon that he comes with, the big, huge, like, uh, like pulse repeater <laughs> cannon. <laughs> So, Dude, is that is that as big as the other figures? I mean, that looks massive. Uh yeah. Let me um let me put put it this up to scale with one. Um, uh, I'll put it like as older. Um, like here's the commander holder, and then like, so it's like almost the so tall as nearly as wow. tall. As him. I'd say like yeah, maybe like a head shorter than him. <laughs> <laughs> That's but yeah, he holds he holds the uh the big Gatling gun. So we gave him like a range finder so he can easily lock onto targets and stuff. Um, and then like, oh yeah. And then like the shoulder pads, they'll be able to come off in the final product. Okay. Um, but yeah, like full range of motion, like can just move, um, like his legs move pretty good. So they're going to obviously move more in the final, but um like he can do butt kicks and stuff like that uh, yeah that's crazy that's pretty dope he has really good articulation um and it, blo it blows my mind i'm sorry that i'm interrupting you again oh, yeah. but it blows my mind that again you, you're you're you tiny company <laughs> making your essentially your first action figure and the product you're showing me is like fucking amazing like like you you start thinking about like like back in the day, you, like this, this is not something you could have easily done back in the day. Like, no, no we've come so far that you are able to have a prototype that looks that good. And you, you're going to have a final product with so much articulation that looks like a, like, like a, something Hasbro or Mattel would have been able to do. Like, it's insane, dude. It blows my mind. No. Yeah. It's definitely with like the whole 3d printing and um, like the technology you have now is definitely made. Uh, yeah, this possible. Um, it's just, yeah, like a privilege to have like all that at our fingertips now. Yeah, um, it's, it's crazy sick. And then, yeah, he can't, it's like, like the articulation for all these figures is like ball jointed head. Um, I'm not really that good with our, like articulation on figures, but it, like for the naming, but I think it's like ball oh, for the name. arms, um, swivel, torso um ball jointed legs i think swivel yeah, biceps um rocker ankles and then uh double jointed knees um and all that so that's across um all the figures so we're just trying to give him as much articulation as possible but i really hope that we he he get he it is a, a stretch goal for him know, obviously it's like it's like the biggest stretch goal right one of the the yeah so the after him there's two other characters um <laughs> one's Valek and then um Aniko the bounty hunter um and she's going to be awesome yeah. Aniko is going to be awesome we're we're still working with a designer on those ones but um but uh what is it Valek is near enough done. We just have a couple critiques on that that just need to be changed. But he should be popping up on the Kickstarter um, like very soon in terms of see like what the renders and stuff of him. It's not going to be like a physical prototype or anything like that. Uh, it'll just be like the renders for him just to get the idea across. And then after that, it's um, Aniko, and she's she might she might go up there as probably like one of my. Uh, favorite characters I would say like she's gonna have like I'll give a little bit of insight on her she's gonna have like um like a double like an axe so it like separates mm -hmm. in half so she'll have like two vibro like axes like uh, that go to like the side of her legs okay and then she can then put them together and make like one huge like pole arm that she can like spin around and take mass amount of like legionnaires out if she wanted to but she's gonna be like the inspiration from her was like samurai uh darth maul um and um like avatar like from um james the, cameron yes oh, okay 
Yeah. So she's going to be a yeah female alien, and I, I can't wait to see what she looks like. But with the the way we've portrayed her and like the story and all that stuff, she's going to be you know pretty badass. So. Are you guys going to te tease the designs for the for the figures, even if it's just art itself, not like the actual figure? Soon on your Instagram. Yeah, maybe? I mean, like I can. I'll I'll show you like a, a render like of the um of Zalik. I don't have anything for a Nico yet, but um I'll try and show it on my phone. But Valik is um Commander Alder's uh father. So he's the head of Volta Enterprises, so he's like the big bad. <laughs> yeah. I am your father, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's just like um like him like greed and um not caring and all that stuff but um so like this is like a render this is very early so it, it'll be like you know subject to change but like of course. this is the like that's his head sculpt okay and then we're gonna change a couple things up but he's gonna that's him and then um this is the back of him sweetness so he's you guys are still like, working on it right of still course still working on it and then he comes with like a helmet uh as well and we're gonna make the helmet have like we would like to make it to where it's like a transparent plastic to where you can kind of see his mm -hmm. face behind it but like that's what is like oh helmet. my god that that helmet reminds me of um i forget the name right now it was i, I the love that helmet that we got from this one was um like an umbrella corporation soldier from i forget what game that was from we got this one from half-life the from valve and then um uh destiny was a lot of stuff that was in gotcha. this one yeah I, I i love that that helmet looks dope and if you can make that transparent that'd be sick yeah that's what we're hoping for <laughs> on him but i don't have anything for a nico but those are like really early renders of him they'll probably uh there'll be some um there might be some dramatic changes in terms of like the torso region and all that stuff has to get fixed up but um but yeah that that's all the the stretch goals um i mean we have some other ideas that we're putting in our back pocket um if the funding were to get that crazy but um we'll just have to have to see at the at yeah that. yeah so, um cool man yeah. Let, question um alder uh clearly yeah, he, alder. yeah he, his daddy owns that big ass company correct yeah he owned so it, it started off with um you know commander alder in his um volt in his volta enterprise gear so he this was him as the bad guy and so he was like you know stationed on planets he would you know his father would you know send him out on like really easing easy training missions and all that stuff but then he wanted to you know have him you know potentially be like the next running guy in charge of the of the enterprise and um he was like all right let's see how tough my 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 boy is and he sent him on this like mission and it i don't want to give too much away because it like it talk it's a in the first and second story it, mm -hmm. it's like that that mission okay and um he he doesn't agree with what's happening so he defects obviously and becomes commander alder um in the cobalt squad colors gotcha. and then um it's his sole duty to sabotage his father's plans because he's all about destruction and um like money and greed like greed and power so it's he's trying to be that little um wrench in the gears to annoy him and like disrupt his plans and stuff like that <laughs> okay. um so that's kind of like where we're kind of leaning with the story and then um there'll be like other you know plot holes and stuff from like the other characters that you get introduced to throughout the story and all that stuff but like yeah right now we're starting with like the the blogs or whatever like that but mm -hmm. we have you know our artist 
that we're working with he can do comic books and all that stuff so we're definitely going to be doing like a graphic novel at some point that's been spoken about um and then we have some like stop motion stop motion animators that we've been speaking with to make like the figures come you know to real life and stuff like that um and then we've been looking at like like animation so like doing like um like little like two minutes little clips of them doing things whether that's a mission or like in like a firefight or something Mm -hmm. like that so like that's what we're trying to go with and try and end up you know doing at some point down the line but um those are the ideas and you know the first uh part is to hopefully get the kickstarter back and um, yeah yeah that's the main thing (laughs) then that'll you know then kickstart everything else after that point so we'll have to see um but yeah if i mean if it fails there's a backup option there's a backup plan but hopefully we don't have to do the backup plan yeah again man i i I hope you, you you don't um uh, I was going to ask you, have you ever seen um, The Expanse on Prime? I've seen the, I have not watched, but I have seen that pop up on like the homepage a bunch of times. Bruh, bruh, let me tell yeah. you something. It's, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, because you're right. talking about space and all this crap, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> what? And there's no, you know, crazy, you know, fighting like, like you know, people in armor, and blah, 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 blah. even though you got the, 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 Mars, the Mars guys have. Dope yep. but it's a really good freaking show and i think um it might serve some uh, some right. inspiration yeah i'll definitely it. take a look at it but um it's fucking awesome i totally have to recommend it um it's books so if you want to read the books you can read the books but um yeah. the show is fucking amazing dude all right yeah, i'll definitely take a look at that because i'm running out of shows to watch <laughs> <laughs> oh my god trust me it the first season is a little slow when it starts but like after that it's like oh and it, it, it's so, it's so good it's so good and the music is fantastic like clinton shorter kills it with the score so okay yeah no i'm definitely intrigued i'll definitely have a look at it Just trust so, me i I, mean, I wanted to add like another little thing or whatever like that mm-hmm. so in the kickstarter we're adding like weapons packs or whatever like that yeah so say for example like if someone doesn't like the figures but they like the weapons we made sure that the figures are the the weapons sorry are compatible with other uh figurines um so like um you can have it to where like where um your figure can like hold like the like these different style futuristic weapons um so if you want to just be like oh let me you know back a weapons pack just so i can make my stormtroopers look a little more cooler or something like that you can have them where it's like they kind of like work with that's or whatever like that um and vice versa i assume you can grab you know weapons from other things and put them with your yep. with your guys well, that's pretty cool so like the this one and then i'm just trying to get it keeping playability in mind i love yes. it and then um the, the shotgun can hold it pretty well so we've been yeah going off a bunch of uh, other you know figurines just to make sure that everything you know works you know properly yeah, yeah. Um, just so we if the person doesn't necessarily like the figures they might like the weapons so you can add it to other toy lines and stuff like that yeah yeah um, encourage customization you know painting whatever color you want to paint them yeah. so they fit with the figures better boom definitely been thinking about it because like i've um i've always been a huge fan of like the warhammer universe mm-hmm. um, like loved the um like the tabletop miniatures or whatever like that yeah like 40k and they and um mcfarland toys have finally released like six inch scale action figures of them and i was in heaven <laughs> when i saw those so i went and bought you know like the space marine the necron and all that stuff they re- they just recently came out so I was hyped about that but what was i thought was really cool was is like they kept in mind the the painting aspect um mm-hmm. with like with the miniatures because you paint them or whatever to your liking but they've yeah. let, they've made grayscale ones of the of the uh like space marine and all that stuff oh, i'm looking at it right now yeah so i was just like ooh, 
I wonder if like people would be would want like a grayscale like legionnaire science where they could just you know paint it to their desire like i mean they, could, they could paint like the, the the legionnaire now in the crimson color but if you had like a blank slate i think you're it would work better probably i'm ch- dude with so many customizers out there i mean i wouldn't be i wouldn't be surprised if that'd be like something you know mm-hmm. that you yeah. guys can do easy yeah, that's definitely been something we've been thinking about um, to possibly do it. We just don't know if that would be like a you know popular like option. But- Qu- question, bro. Have you seen the YouTube channel? Um, and I might butcher the name. Yeah. Um, Astartes? Astartes? Oh, the Adeptus Astartes. Yeah. Astartes. Okay, Astartes. Yeah. So have you seen that YouTube channel of that dude that has a... Um, oh, yeah, the animation or whatever. Did, did you have Unreal. you seen all those? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about Warhammer. You know, I obviously I'm 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 well versed with what they look like, what the game is based on. You know, you paint it, whatever, yeah. and the the monks, you know, in in yeah. full whatever. Like I've seen those, but this animation, good lord, bro! Like, why isn't this a movie? Mm-hmm. Like, like it was just, and it was one guy. He did everything, mm-hmm. everything, everything, and it was just it blew my mind. It blew my mind. It is ridiculous, and it makes the 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 monks look just badass, dude. Like badass. Like I'm assuming, like when when you were playing the game, like that's what you were imagining. Like just seeing it, bro. Oh. Yeah, now where you can physically see it, it's like, oh damn, this is bro. Awesome. Like like I want more. I want more, dude. It was ridiculous. So I'm glad you've seen it because I'm like, I don't know what respectable Warhammer fan has not seen this mm-hmm. few. Uh, videos because they're just sick and if, if you guys you guys watching have not seen it i think i'll put it on the link because it's just stupid even if you don't know what warhammer is bro <laughs> it's a must watch because yeah the 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 amount of work this guy put into this is ridiculous mm-hmm. anyway it's just stupid i i you said warhammer and the first thing that came up to mind was oh, that yeah it's, it's just, such a good like franchise honestly it's so good there's someone and we really haven't seen anything like like i has there been any like cartoons based on it any movies i don't think we have like there uh, hasn't been anything a couple of years ago they did like a warhammer 40k like animation i believe mm-hmm. i can't remember the exact title off the top of my head but i do know that there's a movie that exists and it's a, as an animation okay. um there are a couple of warhammer games out the strat the like the uh rts games are like amazing for it and then the the like the third person shooter uh uh space marine game that that came out a couple that came out a while ago i think and that that was an unbelievable game i loved every second of that one oh really was yeah, that good so good <clears throat> that's sick though but can you imagine yourself yeah i know mark farland has the license now but can you imagine yourself in the future making war with the you know warhammer toys with your, you know, with your company, wouldn't that, that would be, be wouldn't that be sick? <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Really, I would have to look into how that would go with like the, uh, like the licensing part mm-hmm. of things. Because right now, the these figures they're like original, like our own license. I, yeah, I, yeah. I guess you would call it like just built from the ground up. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how it would work with like, like acquiring like other like a license and being able to produce that, I mean, that would be so cool. Like, that'd be, you know, that'd be do, awesome. like a character that you're like, wow, I used to love this character growing up and now I get to like produce and it. And here I am producing it. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be wow. cool. Let, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I was just thinking about that. I'm like, damn, that'd be fucking awesome if you were, you know, somehow ended up, you know, with a license. Mm-hmm. It's it, it just, again, we live in a strange world, you know, for better and worse. You know, like, you know, one of those guys could look at your toys, love it, you know, actually buy it, collect it. And then he hits you up. Yo, man, you fucking love your toys. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm the one of the creators of Warhammer, blah, blah, blah. And you might do it. You're like, whoa. Yeah. You know, know, this is how this shit works now. Like, it's ridiculous. All it takes is that one right person to see something you're doing and be like, oh, shit, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So that'd be cool. That'd be cool. You know, I'm over here just imagining shit. So, yeah. Nothing wrong with a, with a with a creative imagination, man. <laughs> B- 
beautiful beautiful listen i guess that the 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 last thing even though you've alluded to it with everything you said and it seems that it's been for the best um how has collecting like changed your life essentially like how has it influenced your life in in general mm -hmm. um it's definitely like I don't know. I feel like when you collect something, it brings like a, you know, a really good memory back from like way back when. So like the, like just looking up now, I've like behind like the computer, I have like, um, like some very modern day, like, um, like vintage, um, like Clone Wars figures or whatever like that. Okay. But like, I'll try and take one off. Uh, here we go. But like, the like this, like this hit home, like the carded clone. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, like I started collecting clones. <laughs> so when I saw like this on the, on the shelf, I was like, damn, this is awesome. Like I'll keep them in the package or whatever like that, you know, <laughs> it helps you like reflect the, like on your childhood and all your memories and all that stuff. And like, you know, like when you like look around like your office and all that stuff, it's like, this is all stuff I like enjoy and like has all like a little bit of a meat, you know, meaning to me. Like, oh, I like Star Wars. Oh, I like, um, you know, I don't really much Star Wars. I like, oh, like, I like, you know, mythical characters like, um, like Mythic Legions. That's a really great toy line to have mm -hmm. a look at. For uh, Horseman, right? Like vintage style, like, like RC cars. Like, this is really cool. Uh, I have uh, here. this is like a vintage style like RC car. This was my original one that I found when I was a kid and I completely like smashed it to pieces, like the <laughs> wings ripped off and all that. But it and like this used to hold batteries, so the inside's like all corroded from the batteries, yeah. so it doesn't work. Stickers are peeling off or whatever like that. But Lo and behold, like going to like a, a toy convention, I found like one brand new in box. So I was able to oh, build a fresh goodness. one. So this was like, you know, when I was little and I was like, you know, built it, didn't have a care in the world. I was like, let me just obliterate this RC car and leave it outside and all that stuff. But now it's just like, I have like a legit one that I've, you know, even put the stickers on properly and all that stuff. So it's like, I think collect like you know collecting it's definitely it keeps the good memories around it reminds you of things it's like you know shows what you love what you're about all that stuff um yeah it's just like it's just like all stuff that you know like makes you happy and mm -hmm. and all that so like with your collection i'm sure when you look at everything you're like love that character and it brings you back to a time in your life when you first saw that character and you're like oh my god this is this is amazing like um straight up have you ever seen ratatouille yes okay so you know when the when the critic eats the ratatouille and yeah. goes all the way back to when yeah. he was a little kid that's how it is bro that's how it is especially when you yeah. showed me that 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 uh carded um stormtrooper yeah clone trooper sorry clone trooper yeah Dude, same thing happens to me man i just get taking away like there's certain stuff in my hold on give me a second here mm -hmm. can i get this dude? hold up because you were talking about the the rc car mm -hmm. and um and i remember when i was six years old my parents gave me this robot it's not the same one but this robot they turned it on on the floor i was waking up in the morning and i saw it super awesome so I had it for years, but obviously it got fucked up, like yeah. it's just broken, whatever. And I don't know when I, when eBay came around, I started looking for it to see if I could find it. And mm -hmm. it took me, I don't know, about five or six years of just looking. Cause I didn't know what wow. the hell to type. This is like a cheap Chinese, mm -hmm. you know, toy. It's Botoy. It's the name of the company. It's called force <laughs> <laughs> So imagine me not having any clue, just typing robot silver robot bro and i was able to find it so happy when you saw that dude and, and and the guy had the lot of three so it was a gold one a black one and this one and i'm like and he was in the uk and i'm like bro i just want the silver one is there anything we can do can you sell me this and sure enough he sold me the silver one so i've had this here and man you know it's a cheap ass toy whatever but the memories it brings is just like that yeah. little little car of yours dude it's like pfft. Man, it's priceless. It's priceless. Mm -hmm. 
That's so, nah, yeah, that's so awesome, man. I'm glad that you were able to find it. Oh, my God. It took me Especially forever. with, like, the silver robot. It's not like typing in the company name and then the robot, and it's like, dang. Bro, yeah. the amount of Googling that I did to find one to then like find the, the sticker because it then he said force butt. So I'm like, okay, so it says force butt. I'm assuming if somebody puts it on eBay, it'll be on the force butt somehow. And yeah, but like just finding the original picture, like just the initial picture that I knew that was a robot. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh man. man. But, uh, but yeah, but yeah, you're, you're right, man. Collecting. It's all about that, that delicious, wholesome feeling of just, just, awesome like every time i come in this room like you said dude, i look at all this stuff and i'm like yes yes, yes. i'm happy i'm happy i could be having a shitty ass day shitty ass month uh shitty ass 2020 but every time i'm in here looking at my figures i'm like it's just yeah, like all escapes your mind all that bad stuff mm-hmm. like, this exactly, is exactly. My place. The, the same way when i'm playing with my little kid like all that shit just you know yeah. just goes away so yeah I understand the feeling. I think every collector understands the feeling, no matter what they collect, you know? Even if you were just collecting uh, soccer stuff, like even you, you come in there, you look at your, uh, at your soccer shit, you're like, yes, yes. Like, I remember this game. I remember this. Mm-hmm. I, like, I remember, oh, it's, 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 it's awesome, man. It's a feeling that if you don't collect anything, it's really hard to explain to people mm-hmm. because, you know, they don't have any attachment. And some people, like, um, I, I was trying to, ex- I think one of my uncles, I was trying to explain to him that shit. And he, like, my uncle very minimalistic he doesn't give a shit about anything he lives in puerto rico in the goddamn mountains like you know <laughs> he he has his his farm where he grows shit he kills chickens to eat them but you know what i'm saying i was trying to explain to him you know the feeling i would get to collect i forgot how that conversation started but the point is it was impossible mm-hmm. it was impossible like he did not understand that he's like for what you're taking up more room who cares <laughs> i'm like okay don't you have memories <laughs> Yeah, I'm, like, I'm just trying to tell you that this shit activates my yeah. memories. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But why do you want that? Oh, okay, I'm done. In all, all this in Spanish, by the way. You know, it's like okay, no problem, buddy. So that's awesome. Um, anyway, man, listen, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate your time, um, man. Awesome. I hope again. I really hope this helps. Uh, it, you know, I haven't been on my YouTube channel in forever, so I don't know if there's anybody still there. But I'm definitely gonna um um do what I can to spread the word. No oh, question. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I really appreciate that, and I'll I'll um I'll help you in any way, which way possible. I'd like to get your mm-hmm. podcast off the ground. But but this this thing, podcast, whatever it is. But um, I, I totally enjoyed it. I mean, I don't know how much time we spent here, but it's been fantastic just talking. Yeah, yeah. And whatnot, talking, so. talking toys, nothing wrong with that. Talking, collecting, it's awesome. So, uh, James, thank you so much, Bobby. Uh, I wish you the best of luck, you and your uh, partner. What's his name, yeah. Joe? Uh, yeah, Joe. Joe, Joe, good luck, bitch. I hope you guys just fucking kill it. I swear to God, man, I really do. And if you don't, whatever plan B is, I hope that shit gets executed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it, brother. You take care, man. Have a good one. See ya.